Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we have some interesting update coming from the folks at Blender. So, real-time compositing is now here for Blender 3.3 and it is something that is pretty interesting. The last time we saw real-time compositing, that was for Blender 3.1, 3.2, but the way that sort of worked was a little bit different and now 3.3 is coming up with some very interesting things and hopefully we might be seeing this in the final release of blender 3.3 and with that said if you would like to read up on this there's going to be a link in the description that'll bring you over to the real-time compositor page where you can check out some of the things the idea of this present project is for you to be able to work with your GPU and accelerate performance for real-time interaction within your viewport. And how you get to work with this is pretty simple as if you simply go over with this link, which I'm also going to put in the description, it's going to bring you right here where you can see the Blender build for the temporary viewport composition merge. Now this is where everything actually starts making sense. And for those who might also want to come through and read up on some of these things, yes you can. And with that said, let's dive directly into the experimental branch and take a look at some of the things that you can now do with this. So for you to get this to work, you need to go over to edit, go over to preference, go over to the experimental tab and turn on the real time compositor. Once you turn on the real time compositor, you need to go over to your rendering section and on the drop down close to it, you need to also turn on the use real time compositor. Now, once you have this going, you may need to drag out a brand new panel. So what we're going to do is just drag out another panel from here and we're going to switch this to the compositor. Now, once you switch this to the compositor, a couple of things needs to be checked. Now, the very first one, which I'm going to talk to you guys about is this. For you to use the compositor, you need to enable the use compositor node tree. And once you have this going, if we proceed to throw in a brightness and contrast right here and I just simply connect that I want you guys to notice that once you start pushing this up and down that the entire canvas starts getting bright now you don't want this to happen across everything what you want this to do is just happen within the image itself so for you to get that to work you may need to go over to your render section scroll all the way down to where you have your film and turn on transparent now once you do that you would now be able to just simply apply whatever composition that you're doing from here on the image alone. So just back up a bit and let's take a look at something. Now, in certain cases, you might also want to add things like outline, you know, by taking a look at some of the examples on the blog page. If you like to play with the outline or maybe, you know, play with the alpha, you can use the alpha to create some outline. So for that, we may need to throw in a simple blur. We connect this to the image. We can increase this and can set this to 10 by 10. And you can notice that we have the blur. And just to tighten up that blur a little bit, we'll need a color ramp. And with a color ramp, we might need to make this, you know, black. So I'm just gonna set this all the way to black. And from here, we can add one more and set this to white. And I can just simply add one more right here. And we can have this selected and add one more. So I'm just gonna move this over to the section delete this one and we can have this a little bit tight so I can tighten that part and also tighten this part as well. Now you probably wouldn't be seeing this because we are not looking at the image but once we look at it you can now see that I have the outline. I mean the interesting thing here is you're doing all of this within your viewport. These are things that you probably don't know that you need until you get to see them and this is where things start getting interesting. Right now, we're going to draw in a simple mix node. And with a mix node, I'm just gonna say, we'll like this to be the first image and then the second image. You would also notice that what we have right here is simple. We have the monkey and at the same time, we have the blur. But you don't see that because we're not using add. So if we switch this to add, you can see this. And if we punch this all the way down, you can even see it way more. But we want something even more. Now, what if you like to change the color of the outline? And to change that is also very simple. You know, just the very same thing that we've done. We're just gonna throw in a simple mix as well, run that through. And from here, we can now use the color, which we have as a fraction, and then use this as the image. And once we do that, we can go over and change the color of the outline. And once again, every single thing that you're doing is on your viewport, which is dope, by the way. And you might be asking, you know, where did we get this color from? The reason why we're getting that color is because we have this fraction. So if I push this all the way down, you'll notice that we have exactly what we want. And from here, you can start controlling some of these things. You know, you can make it tighter if you want. If you'd like to even increase this, we can set this to 25 by 25. And you can see that right here. And you can, of course, go in and make some, you know, tighter images depending on what you want. Now, some things don't really work exactly because there are certain nodes that are not currently supported. And we're going to talk about that right now. So once you're working with things like texture, 
there is just a couple of things you can do. So I'm just bringing in a texture which we'd like to drive on top of this image. And to do that, we are going to run a simple mix, you know, very simple stuff like we've done before. So I'm just going to drive that mix right in here, which is going to be like in the middle. And we're going to wire this all the way to this part. Now you see, it simply sits on top and we can use a simple multiply. So let's go find the multiply right here. All right, so we can use a simple multiply and put that right on top. And in some cases, you might want to do some transform, you know, which is just simply moving things here and there. So we can do a simple transform and play with the scale. Now, this is where certain things don't really work. So if, for example, you're also thinking about using a scale, you know, like scale image, you would notice that the Compositor 3 currently doesn't support it. Now, it doesn't matter if this is plugged to, you know, a node tree or not. As far as this is existing, it currently doesn't support it. And that is just one of those things you need to keep in mind. There's also a couple of other nodes that currently are not supported right now. But for the most part, once those nodes don't exist within your node graph, you have everything working for you. So from this point, you can now go in and start making some changes, you know, if you like. And you can start tweaking this to get in the best performance of what you actually want to get out of this. And if you like to render this, you can simply go over to the render section and render this bad boy and get exactly what you want. So all of that going over to Photoshop, trying to composite this, you can now do some of those things right here. If you're also thinking about say, moving the entire stuff, all right? So let's say you wanna move every single thing in form of transforming them. Yes, you can. So you can go ahead and drop a simple transform right here and transform the entire thing, all right? So you have like this gigantic stuff that you can now use to transform every single thing. Now, one thing which I've come to find out is images like this, which are like still images that you connect, these images, they leave based off the camera position. So if we go ahead and zoom in, you notice there are a lot, if we zoom out, you know, something like that. But then if you'd like to have like full control, you can use this transform to transform them wherever you want and they would remain right there. So this is more like it. For those who like to take a look at these and also see some of the interesting ideas and things that they can create out of it, then links to this is gonna be in the description and do well to check it out. A huge shout out to the folks at Blender Foundation for making this possible. At the same time, if you're thinking about reading up on some of the milestones and things that will be coming and a couple of notes for this particular feature, links to this as well is also gonna be in the description. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, Peace.